Hi, and very welcome to SNS and to today's seminar. Uh, next year, it's been 50 years since parental leave was introduced in Sweden. And some main motives were to uh, increase female labor force participation and reduce gender inequality. The length of the parental leave was then six months and has been increased uh, and expanded several times since then to the current 16 months. And along with this development, uh, early childcare has also expanded and developed. And most of the debate has focused on female labor force participation and on uh, reducing gender inequality. And less focus has been on the effects on children. Today, we're very happy to launch a report on the effects of parental leave and early childcare on child development. And uh, please take a report with you before you go. It's also available on our website, sns.se. And a couple of years ago, SNS published a report about the effects of parental leave and uh, early childcare on gender inequality. And it's also available on our website. Today's report is written by it's on. Okay, by Jonas Jessen, researcher at the Institute of Labor Economics in Germany, and Nabanita Datta Gupta, who is professor at the Department of Economics and Business Economics at Aarhus University in Denmark. We're also happy to have three more speakers with us today to discuss this report, Annika Wallenskog, Emilia Bjurgren, and Mona Olin, and I will present you further when it's your turn to come up on stage. And you in the audience are also very welcome to join the discussion. Um, please simply just raise your hand and wait for a microphone to ask your question and do so during the panel discussion. And if you want to tweet about this uh, seminar, please use our hashtag SNSKunskap. My name is Louise Lorenson and I'm a research director here at SNS and I will lead today's seminar. And without further ado, I would like to Welcome, Jonas Jessen, up on stage, and you will summarize uh, the report, and you've got 20 minutes. Okay, excellent. Uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. I'm very, very, ha very happy to be here and also to enjoy the great weather in Stockholm afterwards. Yeah, so our report, Parental Leave versus Early Childcare, I think uh, Louise already introduced the topic quite well. These are kind of the most well-known, most popular family policies, basically, um, existing in all, in all wealthy countries. And the main goal is sort of to reconcile work and family life. And as Lou said, uh, like a lot of the early motivation was really to increase female labor supply and to support parents in a way. But of course, it's very important to also think about the children. Children naturally need to be cared for in some way by parents, by early childcare or combination uh, of that in the early young years. Attitudes on that have changed quite a lot, so we can see that in the graph over here, where it's sort of a common question where people are asked, does a child, uh, is a child suffering when their mother um, is working, so sort of a preschool child, and we see that there's less and less agreement for that over time, so sort of most people actually think it's not a problem for child development when, uh, when mothers are working, and that's sort of fueling also higher demand for early childcare. So in this report, we're sort of um, reviewing the evidence on the long-term effects on either parental leave or early childcare on children. It is increasingly common now that children are spending some time in early childcare. When we look at older children, pretty much all of them across OECD countries are attending. But also when we look at younger children who are zero to two years, we see that on average 36% of them are in early childcare. Parental leave, there are sort of some larger differences between countries, but paid maternity leave, with some exceptions, tend to last for around one hour in most countries. So as you said, sort of the, the early policy motivation was really to, to support female employment, to support maternal employment. But I mean, it also has become a key objective in the last couple of years, and the topic has received much, much more attention, what actually the consequences are on child development. So in this SNS research brief that's being released today, or has been released this morning, I guess, um, we're sort of re reviewing the evidence from, from a lot of different studies that have been written on this topic on the development effects on childcare enrollment and parental leave. Because Scandinavian countries were sort of the earliest to expand both parental leave and early childcare, a lot of the early evidence really kind of 
stemmed from Scandinavian countries. I know we're in Scandinavia now, so I mean, that's great for you, but I mean, also good sort of for the wider world that we have evidence from many more settings now. So, I mean, there are definitely many lessons that we really have learned from that now. And there's like a lot of interesting good data available on many types of different outcomes when you sort of, when you're considering like what exactly do we mean when we say child development, these can be really many different indicators of development. So it can be classical indicators of cognitive skills. So for example, um, school grades in primary school or also at later ages, the probability to go to university later, but also non-cognitive skills have received more attention in the last couple of years. That can be emotional stability, empathy, also, for example, stress in children. These are all very important factors of, de of development of children and people in general. And because we don't only... Uh, we can't only look at sort of the 10 or 15 years after parental leave for early childcare, but there's really long ranging data available, especially like in Scandi uh, again from Scandinavian settings. Again, lucky for you, we're always a bit jealous in Germany when we're doing research <laughs> that we can't link people as well. But I mean, a lot of research is also considering the labor market outcomes. So it could be that people, uh, that children are performing better at school and that that really shows up in better labor market outcomes at a later stage. And to really to paint a comprehensive picture on child development effects, we want to take a lot of different indicators of child development um, into account in the research. Uh, without sort of going into too uh, many details sort of uh, regarding all of the specific details in the study, sort of just to emphasize, that we are really uh, trying to focus on so-called causal studies because there can be many, uh, many sort of what we call confounding factors in many studies. Just to give like one very intuitive example, in in a lot of set in a lot of countries, children from higher educated parents are more likely to be enrolled in early childcare. That's also the case in Sweden. Sweden also has very large differences in enrollment by parental education, and when we assess uh, the the development of children from different, uh, uh, depending on whether they have attended childcare or not, we would automatically see that children are performing much better when they were in early childcare. But part of that is simply because these are more likely to come from, from high income, higher educated backgrounds. So kind of all of the studies that we are um, examining here, really trying to abstracting from all of the different factors such that um, sort of the effects that I will be discussing can really be causally linked um, to either longer parental leave or early childcare. And due to that, I mean, different, I mean, that's maybe a bit of economic speak, sources of variation, how we call it, are being used. So, for example, parental leave reforms, they kind of have the nice feature that that some children are born just a few days before a new policy is introduced. Others are born sort of on the other side of the cutoff. And quite often parents could actually not know yet what the parent leave policy is. And then these children be, will be quite identical, except of that one of them is exposed to more generous parent leave, for example. When we think of childcare, quite often sort of childcare expansions, which sometimes tend to differ between municipalities, which can sometimes just be sort of due to the capacity of certain municipalities, for example. And in some cases, for example, in, in Oslo, there are also lotteries when there's over demand for childcare slots. So lotteries are, of course, also great because these are parents who all want, want to send their children to childcare, but some of them are sort of just lucky in a way that they got a good lottery number, which means that their children can attend earlier. And sort of in the next couple of minutes, I, I mean, you can read the whole report sort of as a nice literature before going to bed tonight, or maybe some of you have read it already, but I just sort of want to summarize some of the um, main findings. First, I will focus on parental leave, then early childcare, and then just discuss a few topics where there's still a lot of open questions where hopefully we can do the event again in five years and maybe I can answer a few more of those questions then. And parental leave, I mean, uh, one very clear aspect from many different studies is that when parental leave is being expanded, when we look at the child development effects, it really is important what the alternative form of care is. So it could be that parental leave is expanded, but parents would have stayed at home or commonly still mothers would have stayed at home for a longer time period anyway, then a longer paid parental leave may not really have made much of a difference. But maybe some 
mothers were already returning to employment and some sort of informal care arrangements, maybe grandparents or sort of some family day centers um, could be places where the children are being supervised during the day. And so there's some evidence, uh, for example, stemming from Austria and Norway, which both look at parent leaf expansions in context, where a lot of the alternative care arrangements were sort of more informal in their nature. So it was usually not that parents were really taking uh, care at home otherwise, or that high quality childcare was available. And when the alternative to parental care was sort of of that informal nature, then, then we see that children are really benefiting when they sort of have the more dedicated type of care being provided by, by their parents. And that does materialize um, in better education and labor market outcomes. And not mentioned here, but in Austria, in fact, we, uh, the researchers also found that children are actually healthier when parental leave was expanded. Naturally, we can't quite generalize from a few studies that are sort of focusing on introductions of parental leave or so that, that these effects will be similar um, at all different child ages. So an expansion from six to 12 months, 12 to 18 months or so. Although it's always an expansion of six months, they may have pretty different effects on child development, in fact. And there are two studies, uh, one, one from Norway, one from Germany, that are really examining several expansions over time. And that sort of also helps sort of to provide uh, to paint a richer picture on whether there are certain time periods when a parental leaf expansion may be particularly beneficial or whether there's a point in time where parental leaf expansion may actually backfire. So uh, Norway, uh, over a couple of years, sort of expanded parental leaf from 18 to, uh, to 35 weeks, so still less than a year, still less than also what Sweden has now. And Germany actually had even stronger expansion. So very, very long time period, up to 36 months actually. And that was also effectively reserved to mothers. So that's like a very, very generous uh, parent leave system, which is also relatively uncommon these days. And what these studies find is sort of when parent leave uh, is being expanded, when children are a little bit older in those two settings, that there were actually not any strong um, effects on on child development. And the same is also true for some other studies that really specifically focus on expansion for higher income mothers. And I said in the previous slide already that um, that sort of the alternative matters a lot. So what sort of effects could occur when high quality childcare is available? And I think every country likes to complain about its quality of early childcare, but still in, in international comparison, I can assure you that, that Sweden is doing relatively well. <laughs> um, and so, so in, in Denmark and Sweden, where high quality childcare is available, uh, longer parental leave sort of also expansions at different stages also did not show up in really strong effects on, on child development. But in Sweden, there is some evidence that when uh, when the households uh, really have higher educated mothers who, who may know a bit better how to really provide a nourishing environment for their children, that there can be some benefits if they um, stay home uh, for longer time periods. But that's evidence also comes from 30 years ago. So, so findings from some points in time may not necessarily be identical 30 years later. That's, of course, also quite important to, uh, to consider. As I said earlier, um, I think uh, for a long time in social science, everyone was happy to kind of focus on very hard outcomes, to always look at test scores, to look at labor market outcomes. Not necessarily because everyone thinks that these are the most important ones, but these are also very easy to measure. And I guess many people also think maybe these are just the most relevant ones. But as I said, it's also quite important for the for the development, also the well-being of the child to also consider some socio-emotional skills. And so for that, it's important that actually some surveys are really needed that either parents or children are sort of being examined on school entrance examinations. Quite often doctors also um, assess both the cognitive and non-cognitive skills. And some research from Den Denmark has found that longer parental leave sort of at the first year actually did not really affect any of those hard outcomes like school grades, for example, but did have some positive effects on socio-emotional skills. 
And I think an important thing to consider when there are no short run effects on school grades, but social emotional skills are being improved. Potentially, this could still show up in positive outcomes at a later stage when children are perhaps more relaxed when going to school, feeling better. Some outcomes could also really show up after a couple of years. That's always something important to consider. And when we look at the effects of parental leave, quite often, sort of, I mean, I mentioned parental leave reforms a couple of times, so it's kind of natural to always think, uh, think directly about the children who are affected. But the environment at home may also be more broadly affected for the families. And for example, there was a, um, a reform in, in Sweden in the late uh, 1980s, which also expanded parent leave depending on the birth timing between two children. And that study actually did not find any effects on the children who were sort of born around the cutoff, but really found that uh, that the older children were benefiting. So, I mean, there were some older siblings and when the mother stayed at home for a little longer, even some children who were attending childcare, perhaps when they got home, their mother was home with the other child and they still had uh, a few more one-on-one -on -one interactions. So some, uh, some positive effects could also be sort of indirectly to the children who are not directly affected by reform, if you would call so. Um, on the other hand, if we, I mean, I talked about some uh, some settings where there are no effects at all or where there are positive effects, it's actually relatively rare sort of in research to really identify parental leave reforms that had strong negative effects on children. So, I mean, there may be other reasons why people would not support parental leave, but there's there's not strong evidence really that children are negatively affected. It's mostly just that there are no positive effects on children. Okay, now let me, I mean, I won't talk about parental leave and early childcare. You all know what's coming now. I talked for a couple of minutes about parental leave. So now let me summarize the research on early childcare. And I have to admit the research and the evidence on early childcare is actually a bit easier to summarize because the conclusions are much, much clearer that we can actually find from the research. And I think from my perspective, sort of the uh, by far the most important finding, which has been which is not like restricted to studies from Scandinavia or Germany or the US, but really has been found across a wide range of countries with different institutional contexts, different norms, is that children of disadvantaged backgrounds really tend to benefit in their development disproportionately. So these can be children either from lower educated parents, from lower income parents, or sometimes also parents with a, with a migrant background. And in that sense, uh, child can, can really help to what's sometimes called to level the playing field because quite often when you go to primary school uh, when you sort of assess the development of children there tend to be large differences by socioeconomic background already and when when children are attending childcare from an earlier age on these differences actually tend to be smaller and when differences are very large already when you go to primary school the children who are worse off will have a much much harder time catching up so sometimes it's impossible to really fully address those very very early ingrained inequalities so i think sort of in terms of public public returns to achieve better opportunities for all children that's a very very valuable finding from our perspective we sort of uh, focus primarily on the socioeconomic background, but we also know that when boys and girls are being compared, when they are of the same age, that on, on many measures, boys actually tend to perform worse than girls. So, I mean, they tend to be a little worse in, in school, also tend to have more social emotional problems, for example, when they're young. And boys also tend to benefit from being in early childcare at an earlier age. But of course, there could be a concern what's actually happening hap what's actually happening or how are the children from more advantaged backgrounds? How are they affected? Maybe it's just positive for children from disadvantaged backgrounds because their environment at home is worse. And that's not this quite the same for advantaged children. But the research has either found that there are no effects at all or just small positive effects. Maybe particularly relevant for this audience. So in Scandinavian countries where early childcare is of of high quality comparatively. Research has commonly found that the effects are positive for all children, but they are more positive for children from disadvantaged backgrounds. And as I, as I said just now, like a, a common interpretation is why, why the child development effects are stronger from children from disadvantaged backgrounds is really that they have a less enriching 
environment at home. That's kind of a common explanation for that. Um, but an important thing to consider is that it's unlikely that sort of the entire home environment and the parent-child interactions that they will remain exactly the same just in the reduced time that parents are spending with their children. But of course, the parent-child interactions, they will also be affected by, by the children attending early childcare earlier. So there's a very interesting study who sort of considers both dimensions at the same time from Japan. Unfortunately, there are not that many studies that really can look at the two elements together. And the a study from Japan who sort of looks at childcare expansions, first of all, it has the common finding that children from, from lower educated parents benefit much, much more from early childcare. And the differences when they're attending primary school are much, much smaller. So, I mean, that's kind of the common finding, which is interesting to also document for Japan, but that itself no one in research would get excited about anymore. But kind of the really interesting thing is that the study in Japan also considers uh, parental well-being and, and the parenting quality. So parents are kind of observed and also being surveyed how exactly they're interacting and engaging with their children. And they actually found that when children are going to early childcare, that the parenting quality is really improved substantially. So there can be different mechanisms. So there can sort of be parental exhaustion when they're spending all day with their children. And when you have less time with your child, you really want to make it worthwhile and sort of improve the quality time. So sort of despite the overall reduced time that parents are naturally spending with their children, it does not necessarily mean when children are going to early childcare that um, sort of the engaging one-to-one -one interactions between parents with their children, which are particularly valuable for child development, are really being reduced. And that's also what uh, what the study that I was working on from Germany, we also found like with, with time use data where it's like really in very small 10 minute slots over the de day, parents are documenting what they're doing with their time. And there we also kind of see the same compensation. So when parents are just are just seeing like on weekdays, their children in the afternoon and evenings, they're sort of shifting some of the, some of the time like to that time period where they're really actively engaging with their children, reading with their children. So for parents, it seems to be quite important that they really have like the a certain number of very engaging parent-child time per day. So, so far, sort of really talked about the positive effects of early childcare, but I mean, there have also been several studies that have really documented negative effects and in some cases, very negative effects of early childcare. So it's very important to also put those into context. And these uh, stem from some settings. For, one was from Quebec and another study from from Bologna, I mean, these are both very well done studies and they really document very negative effects on child development in the long run. So they don't only look at test scores in primary school, but the study from Quebec even looks at higher crime rates in the long time for children who are attending childcare earlier. And the same is in Bologna. So it's a pretty wealthy city in Northern, beautiful city in Northern, Northern Italy. And they also document that children from advantaged uh, backgrounds really have substantially lower IQ scores. But what both of these studies really have in common is that these are settings where childcare is of comparatively low quality, so much, much lower compared to all of the settings where the positive effects have been documented. So kind of a very important policy lesson is also that you can't only say, okay, childcare, everyone will benefit, children from disadvantaged backgrounds will benefit more, but the quality really has to be adequate because otherwise there can be negative consequences, not only for advantaged children, but potentially for all children. Okay, so I will wrap up in a second. So as I said, I just quickly want to point so, sort of towards some, some open questions that we can hopefully answer better in the future. So, I mean, I already laid out how childcare can play an important role in reducing socioeconomic inequalities, but in essentially all OECD countries, including Sweden, Germany, and many others, there are big inequalities in access to early childcare, although the early childcare systems are in their name universal. And I think it's not very well understood yet why that is the case and what good policies could be sort of to really equalize access to early childcare, and I think uh, we still have to do sort of a better job in understanding that and into finding good answers sort of to give all children equal access, especially to those who would benefit a lot from early childcare. Another aspect is that uh, what I mentioned sort of when 
that negative effects of childcare can occur in settings where quality is low. I just kind of used the term quality. And I mean, I know that people are nodding, people sort of have an, have an image of what a good quality setting could be like, but what exactly does it mean? I mean, we do have some measures uh, which are often being used also in this context, for example, the, the staff to child ratio. But I mean, there are also other elements, for example, the qualifications that they need, how big the rooms are, what sort of toys they have, what the process quality is, sort of is it a structured program or not. And it's also not very well understood sort of at what point effects can become negative for children, what a minimum quality is and so on. So I think also that sort of more evidence on that is needed sort of to adequately design childcare facilities and also to sort of use limited funds well. And on a very final note, uh, I talked about parental leave. The report is called parental leave. But when we look at the reality, in most cases, it's primarily maternity leave, because even in settings, uh, again, Sweden, Germany, case in point, the settings are gender neutral, but mothers tend to take a large share of parental leave. So in Sweden, it's about 70% of parental leave is taken by mothers. In Germany, it's still a bit more. So, I mean, there have sort of been improvements to more equal leave taking, but I mean, it's still unequal in essentially all countries. So there has been an EU directive which came into effect last year, which sort of want to increase um, parental leave taking by fathers as well. And I mean, I think that's a development that's likely to continue to some degree um, in the future. There will be differences by countries. And I think that will also be quite fascinating sort of to examine what will happen in that dimension, what the effects on child development on that will be. Okay, um, very tiny bit over time, but I guess not horribly. So I do have some con concluding remarks. So, I mean, print leaf, as I said, does have positive effects sort of when it's being introduced. So, I mean, I think there's not really a, a debate on the first couple of months that it's important for, for children to have the, uh, for parents to have the, the option to sort of spend the engaging time with their children, also sort of for the health of mothers, of course. But I mean, there's not really a lot of evidence sort of for positive effects on child development for expansions uh, in later periods. Negative effects on childcare, I mean, that's often fear by, feared by parents, sometimes also feared by policymakers, for example, when they were, we want to increase female employment, but does it come at the expense of, of children? But that does not tend to be the case unless quality is low. Of course, we should always be monitoring. I think one could say that on pretty much every policy uh, that is being discussed, but I think that's very important also that a wide range of outcomes are considered. We shouldn't only focus on test scores. We should also have a look at, at child well-being, what's the stress and emotional stability of children. And of course, that's also important what the long run labor market consequences are. Louis said there is an SNS report on sort of the effects of early childcare and parental leave on gender inequality. I did not talk about that so much today, but I mean, potentially there could also be a conflict of objective between certain policies, but I mean, we sort of wanted to focus on child development today. But when it comes to early childcare, I think there's not really a conflict between a policy that can increase maternal employment and also be beneficial for children. And then I'll better stop now. Thank you. Thank you. You can stay on stage here. I have a few questions. So thank you so much, Jonas, for that presentation. I have a few questions to you before we let the rest of the audience up on stage. Uh, so childcare of high quality seems to be beneficial for children. Uh, but do longer hours, uh, is that more beneficial or is it some point uh, where it can backfire? Yeah. Uh... That's a very good question. So what's sort of the right dosage, if you want to call it that? So, I mean, of course, you need to have a certain amount of hours in early childcare. I mean, that's also like what many childcare facilities are demanding, that you don't only send your child for like an hour or two there. So, I mean, there will definitely be a certain number of hours. I mean, I think in most countries, children are always spending at least four or five hours there. So, I mean, I would say that there's a certain minimum. There's not really a lot of research like on when exactly do positive effects occur. But I mean, there's some research on the effects of very long hours actually. So what happens when children are spending more than eight or nine hours at daycare centers, which is like comparatively long. And there is some evidence that at some point effects can actually turn negative for children. So that does not concern cognitive outcomes so much. So not really things that will show up in test scores later, but really the non-cognitive outcomes like social emotional stability and children 
also commonly become a bit stressed when they're spending very, very long hours when everyone else is getting picked up. They're still waiting for their parents to show up. So extremely long hours can have negative effects on some dimensions for children. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Jonas. Uh, so uh, please have a seat again. And uh, now uh, I would like to welcome Annika Wallenskog up on stage. Uh, so you're the chief economist uh, at the Swedish Association uh, of Local Authorities and Regions, SQR, and you will give uh, just a brief overview of the Swedish childcare. Yeah. Uh, very welcome. Thank you. It's a very long line, the name. Swedish Association and all of that, yeah. <laughs> so what does it look like in Sweden? Uh, if you see the percentage of children enrolled in preschool, if they're born in Sweden, if they're born in another country, or if the parents are born in another country, you see it differs. And since Jonas said that it's more advantage, uh, it's an av advantage for children for other countries to go to preschool, uh, people have tried to get the amount or the percentage up for for uh, children born abroad or with migrant migrant background, and there was a, a public report presented in 2020: more children in preschool for better development in Swedish language, and then uh, a lot of municipalities try to get the amount or the percentage of children with migrant background to go to preschool uh, and uh, I saw in lots of uh, municipalities that they try to do this with better information on the website in different languages and also look at how many places do we have in preschool in different parts of the town just to get the amount up. Uh, and Jonas also talked about the quality. There are different things of how to measure the quality, but one, one uh, way to measure quality is how uh, many children are there in each group in preschool. Also, like in Sweden, we don't, uh, I, I managed to say daycare some with, at some point, we always say preschool in Sweden since we switched into preschool. Uh, and also uh, like the first 15, the 15 hours a week that we have in preschool is free. But if we look at the average child group sizes, you can see that uh, unless what people might think uh, that the groups are getting smaller and smaller. So many people think that the groups are getting bigger, but they are not, both in uh, municipalities, preschool and in private preschools, the, um, the sizes of the groups are getting smaller. And maybe that makes the quality better also, if you have more smaller groups. Uh, and we've also looked at some examples uh, in Oslo, for example, they, uh, they said we will have pro free preschool for uh, children with a migra migrant background. And they made this uh, attempt in two uh, 2006 and, and 1998, and they outreached to people living in areas with a lot of foreign born persons. Uh, so they went to the areas and tried to enroll children going to preschool. And uh, that made an effect. And then they measured what happened with those children. And they could see the first years in school, these children performed better in literacy and mathematics uh, uh, if they had gone to preschool, uh, unless if they hadn't. And also another effect that you, don't speak very much about, it's that the mothers went to work and they learned Norwegian better, which also had an effect for, the, for these children. Uh, there is also another study in uh, Gothenburg, Angered, in 2017. Uh, if you put in resources with children with NPF diagnosis early, that makes a good effect. Then you have to follow it up in school, of course. But uh, when they did that uh, in Angerea, they saw that the children uh, who had this NPF diagnosis, they performed better in school if they got the help in early stages. So it's also uh, that those children may not have had this help, this help if they had stayed at home instead. So this is two examples that we've looked upon on in 
S K A R I say, not the other long word. <laughs> So much, Annika. Thank you. Uh, please uh, stand at the third yeah. table over mm -hmm. there. So, yeah. Uh, just a question to you before we let the rest of the yeah. panel up. So uh, you looked at this enrollment mm -hmm. gap for uh, children with and without foreign backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And do you know how it changed over time? A small... Um difference uh, some more children from from migrant backgrounds goes to preschool now but the biggest difference is that there are very much more people now from for, with migrant background at the if you look in to, in the year 2000 there were 12% of the children with with foreign background now it's 25% of the children with foreign background so that makes it even more um more important that these children goes to preschool. Okay, interesting. Thanks. And those, uh, so those outreach activities. Do you think they were successful? Yes, that that they they found out that in in Oslo, and we haven't uh, like in Sweden. We have we worked in a different way with information and and better websites and and things like that. But uh, I I haven't heard uh, of a, of people going out trying to persuade the parents to put their children in preschool. Yeah, I see. And we still have a fee for, for those groups as well. Uh, yeah, in but the yeah. first 15 hours is always free. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Annika. And now uh, I would like to uh, welcome uh, the rest of the panel up on stage. Uh, so in, ad in addition to Annika Wallenskog and Jonas Jessen, we also have Emilia Bjugren and Mona Olin. Emilia Bjugren is from the Social Democrats and is Vice Major for Schools and Education, Labor Market and Human Resources at the City Council of Stockholm. Mona Olin is from the Sweden Democrats and is a member of the Committee for Social Insurance. Uh, very welcome. And Emilia and then Moana, uh, what is your main takeaways uh, from uh, the report? I think, uh, firstly, it was a really interesting report. So thank you very much for uh, this knowledge. Uh, and of course, uh, for me, the most uh, important thing is to see that, that what the the way we can see in our schools is actually uh, confirmed that uh, for kids from more disadvantaged backgrounds, the preschool is very important to get the same start when they come to school. Uh, and we can see this uh, very uh, much in literacy and language in our uh, schools that kids who hasn't been to preschool in certain areas have a very tough time to uh, get uh, yeah their schooling going. And I think that uh, with this also tell us that we have a challenge to work even harder in the enrollment in the preschools. And this is one of the things that we work very hard within the municipality to get more kids in uh, enrolled in the preschools in those areas with more disadvantaged uh, backgrounds. Because we can see in more opulent areas like Sadamal, more Hagistien, that uh, most kids do go to preschool already, about 97%. But in areas uh, like Järva or Skärholmen, uh, we're down at 88% and even less if you really look at uh, the toughest areas. Uh, and this, of course, also um, affects the, the question of quality. Uh, because one way of um, measuring quality is to see, does the person the employees on in our preschools have the education to work with kids are they actually uh, uh, teachers uh, educated teachers and unfortunately this also had this um, uh, connection that in those areas that are more uh, prosperous we have more qualified or educated teachers than in those areas where the kids actually has uh, the disadvantages uh, so this is also an important perspective. We can see that the quality is really important and we have to make an even better job in making sure that we have uh, high quality preschools in the whole city. Uh, and the the ones who are like, municipality um, driven are a little bit or run are a little bit better, but still one third of the personnel in our municipality run preschools 
does not have education to work with kids. Uh, and if you look at our private preschools in the city, it's even lower, it's half. Uh, so I think uh, I think this confirms that it's good with childcare. We have to make sure we enroll even more kids in childcare, but we also have to make the lesson and uh, make them even better. Thank you. And Mona? Uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you very much for the report that you presented in a very interesting way. Uh, my main takeaway from this report is uh, surprisingly the positive effects of uh, parental leave for the f uh, first six to eight months and then uh, showing uh, very positive results uh, leaving the children in daycare even if they are very young. In Sweden, uh, early daycare means leaving the child when it's one year and uh, leaving before that is uh, hardly ever even spoken about. Um, uh, also, uh, the findings that children from uh, disadvantaged uh, backgrounds, uh, they have great, uh, 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 great uh, possibilities in better success in school and uh, equal social standing if they are in the child care in early age. And uh, they get the better and proficient language skills, which allow them to uh, reach better school results. And um, um, also one thing that I thought about was if the children are benefiting from early child care, uh, perhaps this should be looked upon with new eyes from both uh, countries and political sides, because it seems like uh, both the countries and political sides are trying to compete with uh, extending the parental leave, which actually shows not to be beneficial for the children. Uh, this is very interesting. And in Sweden, we have just now decided to double the days that are called double days, when the mother and the father can spend days together at home with the children. So it used to be 30 days uh, that they could both take parental leave together, and uh, it will change to 60 days, and these days has to be taken out within the 18 first month. And uh, it will be very interesting to see where uh, what results that will give. Um, but uh, I think it's very interesting, and I think uh, there is a lot to learn and uh, develop within the child care system. But of course, also quality in preschool is uh, extremely important for, for all children. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Annika, uh, do you, what, what are the main challenges in providing quality, would you say, from, from different municipalities? What, what are the challenges? Oh, one of the challenges is, is, of course, the expense. If you have a lot of teachers there, uh, it's more expensive. But a very big problem that we see now, although all through Sweden, is that there are not that many uh, person to hire. I mean, you cannot employ many people because there aren't any. And also, if you want uh, experienced persons or educated people, it's a lack almost everywhere in Sweden, especially in some municipalities. And that's a big problem, I think. Uh, but though we see that the amount of children going down, there are less and less uh, children because uh, we haven't had as few born uh, in Sweden since uh, in two two 2022, there were less uh, children born than you have to go back to 2005 to, to have so few children born in Sweden. So, and maybe that will help the situation, but not in the long run. <laughs> Okay, but temporarily, that's good for quality, at least, yeah. I guess. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, but uh, since um, uh, childcare is beneficial, then should we try to put uh, children in childcare earlier than we do today? What do you think? Jonas, do you want to start? What, what are the pros and cons? Yeah, sure, I can, can start with that. So 
So, so I mean, Sweden, as in many other countries, I mean, what I mentioned is that a common starting age, I mean, when, when children can start to attend childcare is 12 months usually. And because, I mean, that's the case in most countries, admittedly, we there's just not that much evidence on what exactly the effects are if children are starting even earlier. So there's there's some evidence from Oslo and Denmark, which have also found some small beneficial effects when children are starting even earlier at around the age of 10 months. But I mean, it, we don't have evidence really from many countries or really from, from larger studies yet. So I can't, or I don't really want to say too much on that. And of course, also something to consider is, I mean, we are really focusing sort of on the aspect of child development now, which I think we can all agree is an extremely important outcome. But I mean, at the same time, we also have to consider like what do parents feel comfortable with? And in a way, it's like a positive message what we found that, I mean, child development tends to be positively affected when children are attending at a certain age. But if parents are feeling extremely uncomfortable with sending their children to childcare when it's eight months old, for example, maybe that's then also not a great policy if that's really widely enforced. So, I mean, that's also something that has to be considered. Some parents may feel good with that, then if that's also beneficial for the child, that's great. But I mean, some parents may also be reluctant and I think one should also be understandable towards that in the end. Mm. Uh, do we have any questions in the audience? Yes. Over there. Hi, thank you very much for a good presentation. I'm uh, the chief economist with the Swedish Women's Organization. And I just have a couple of clarifying questions. So I was wondering, you said that you can see positive um, results on childcare or child development after six months in, uh, or if they, uh, if the parental leave is six months, but uh, you also mentioned that you see a big difference between um, parents with a lower educational background and other parents, and that for uh, parents with a higher educational background, you said you didn't really see those effects. And I'm just thinking intuitively, it makes sense that if you come from a home where you know, maybe there's abuse, maybe, you know, there's, it's a bad home setting that it would be very beneficial for the child to get out of that environment. But for other, if you uh, grow up in a loving household with parents that care for you, that it might be beneficial to stay home longer. So I'm just wondering, uh, can you see that there's a sort of split in that, uh, how long is the most beneficial for the parental leave? Um, yeah, thank you for the, for your question. I mean, it would be uh, very nice if I or I would be happy if I could really mention like a specific number to you. Then that ten months or twelve months or fourteen months is a golden rule or something like that. I mean, unfortunately, that's not really what I can say. It's not really backed up evidence to give a, sp a specific number like that. I mean, I think your general thinking, your point is like very very much correct, and I think it's also reason like why we do see those. Uh, differential effects by family background. I mean, I mean, if there's abuse in some family, that's of course kind of extreme and negative cases. But I mean, it's also kind of the case in unfortunately way too many families. So it's not a niche phenomenon, unfortunately. So I mean, I think that is also reason why visiting early childcare at a young age is especially beneficial for some children if they really come from abusive homes, for example of the parents simply have not the capacity or the knowledge to really provide their, their children with what they need for their development. And I think on the other hand, that's also the reason for why for advantage backgrounds. I mean, as I said, when childcare is of a high quality, many studies also find some small positive effects on them, but the effects are usually always small on that. But there are also many settings uh, where it is found that disadvantaged children are benefiting, but the effects are kind of neutral for children from more advantaged backgrounds. So, I mean, we still sort of see it, which you can consider to be good news, I guess, because it enables both parents to be in employment and there are sort of neutral effects for children. So that's that still has a positive effect in that sense, I guess. Um, yeah, but, but I mean, I fully agree with you that sort of the different home environment and the knowledge capacity sort of to know what's best for your child, that differs a lot between households, yeah. Hey, thank you. We have uh, two more questions. Uh, first, over here. There's a microphone. Yeah. Uh, I'm Per Kogeson, a retired professor. I've followed this research area for more than 40 years. 
uh, published two books, the first one by SNS in 2005. Um, I, I don't have much of objections to what you have presented. I think that goes <laughs> along with what I have learned from many, many more studies than those that are covered by your report. Um, and that the, sm the differences generally when it comes to early start are relatively small and they diminish over time because if you measure at the age of 13 rather than only at the age of seven or eight, we'll find that the difference is smaller. But what I lack, and that um, is my real question to you, is the effect on parental health from parental leave, uh, where I found a very interesting article uh, recently published in The Lancet, which showed that mental health among those that have a longer leave is better than those that have a shorter one. And that was based on 45 studies internationally. And that makes me think, and we can also see that uh, stress-related health among women uh, is very high in the ages between around 30 to 45, which coincides with having smaller children. And we also know that parents that are in a stressful situation generally generate stress among their kids. And you talked about the non-cognitive aspects, but only very briefly. So what I would like to see is much more research on non-cognitive aspect, aspects on kids and on their parents, particularly their mothers. Can you uh, comment on this? Uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, I can say that I mean, it's great that you've been following it for 40 years and don't have many any major objections. I mean, that's, <laughs> you always get scared for a second if someone stands up <laughs> with such qualifications. No, but I mean, I wholeheartedly agree with you on your point that, I mean, I think just due to how easy it is to measure, I mean, that's, I think, partly reason why people sort of focus on test scores, labor market outcomes, and I guess test scores, one can also say, okay, that's important for entering university later. But I mean, those social emotional skills are also extremely important. I mean, not only for sort of uh, also for labor or market outcomes later, but also just for the well-being of children and parents. And yeah, I mean, we, in this report, of course, we really focus on child development. I think there are so many different interesting dimensions that one uh, one can take into account in that field of research. But I think sort of the effect on parent, parental health themselves are also very important. And I mean, I think that's also a clear reason why also no one sort of objecting or discussing about having parental leave for six months or a bit longer, that it's that that's clearly beneficial for children. I mean, the US is an exception, of course, where I mean, some states have policies like that. But I mean, there's no nationwide parental leave in the US, which sounds bizarre coming from Europe in my perspective. When we sort of look at the um, at the child development effects on parental of parent leave expansions, of course we have to con consider that when when parental stress or some parental outcomes are affected, these will commonly also affect children. So sort of when we look at long run outcomes of children, I mean they are always sort of directly impacted by parental outcomes as well. So I mean when if a study finds that that if parental leave is taken away and parental stress goes up very, very strongly, then I think it's kind of natural to conclude that children also will be negatively affected. So, I mean, I think in most settings, it would sort of be, uh, if we talk about child development and parental well-being, it would always be revealing to study both together and ideally have the measure sort of within families to be able to study really parents and children together. I think that would sort of allow us to paint a much richer picture. And I mean, there may also be time periods when children are benefiting, but parents are perhaps being hurt by longer or shorter parental leave. So I think we always want to be as comprehensive as possible. In the end, we are quite often restricted by the lack of data, which is not that often the case in Scandinavia, but unfortunately at times as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. We have one more question over here. Thank you. Um, I'm Louise Rollins. I'm the president of the preschool board in Huddinge municipality. Uh, so I'm, of course, interested in uh, what can I do with this information in the municipality. And um, it's clear that uh, the children from disadvantaged sets backgrounds benefit more from attending childcare and that the quality is important and a low quality have negative effects. 
So what we can do in the municipality is to uh, allocate more resources to um, areas, uh, preschools in areas where more uh, children have parents that have uh, less income, less educated, and many are uh, born abroad. And can you say anything about the effects of how we can do it in different ways? We can uh, we can allocate it in different ways and different amount of money we can allocate. And of course, if we put more money into those areas, it will be less money into other areas. Can we say anything about the effect of, of doing that? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Emilia, go ahead. I mean... Maybe I can't uh, give you the answer that you were um, hoping for, but I think that it's an important perspective to uh, be able to have a socioeconomic uh, perspective when you finance pre-schooling, because we have this when we finance schoolings uh, in much more developed way. Uh, we do it a little bit in the city of Stockholm for preschools as well, but not in the structured way that we do in school. But I also think that one aspect is um, uh, to that uh, the permits to have a preschool also has to be a little bit tougher uh, because we can see that in disadvantaged areas there are more bad preschools uh, where the teachers also tell us when the kids come to school that no we know that when they come from this one they won't have enough uh, language or uh, social skills even uh, so I think it's two things. We have to put more money where they are needed, but we also have to have harder uh, rules to make sure that uh, yeah, that those who actually enroll the kids in preschools can be sure that they will have good quality preschools. Yeah, go ahead, Mama. Thank you. It's very interesting that you bring that up. And it's, of course, a very... Uh, specific question for the municipalities to know how they should handle. I think the question about uh, uh, the preschools that are not uh, with the high standards, uh, there is a responsibility within the mu municipality to control all the preschools and uh, make sure they follow all the guidelines and uh, rules that they have to follow. And if they don't, then uh, they should be replaced with another one. Uh, regarding placing money exactly for uh, uh, the preschools, it's also a municipality question, but I think it's needed to, to have an overlook of the system, especially if... Uh, if uh, people should be able to perhaps leave their children at even younger age than they do today, uh, which uh, the way I look at it should be possible if, uh, if the parents uh, both agree on doing that. In Sweden, you're not, uh, the society is not uh, very nice to you if you say you're gonna leave your 10 month old baby at the childcare, but uh, it could be good for both the child and the parents, uh, especially since uh, Jonah's report here shows that uh, spending a couple of hours or half a day away from a child uh, brings a better uh, invested time when you are together. And that shows for both uh, the highly educated parents and the ones from uh, low income background. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, time flies. So very short, if you uh, were to change one thing uh, regarding either parental leave or childcare, what would that be? Annika, do you want to start? Um, no, I, I think um, now when the municipalities goes into a situation where the economy is very, very tough, it's very important to not take away money from preschool, I think, because we need to put money into everything that will will be, I mean, it will affect the children in the long run. So uh, it's very, very important to to leave the money there. You have, you can save in other, uh, in other areas than in preschool, I think. What other areas? <laughs> yeah, I know it's very difficult. 
But uh, what we say is that that everything that like if you if you take money away from because it's so important that children get uh, help in an early stage because that will affect them in the long run. Uh, as I said about the NPF diagnosis and things like that. And maybe you can save money in school if you take better care of the children in preschool, later in school. Okay, thank you, Annika. Emilia, what would you ch change? One thing. I would like for the municipalities to be able to uh, control more the quality inside the preschools because we are, we are the ones who should control the preschools, but it's pretty limited what we can look at financing security uh, but we can't really complain about too few uh, educated teachers and that kind of quality measure so that would be one thing and the other thing I would like to uh, take the opportunity to mention is uh, regarding the question about mental health with mothers and that kind of topic I think it's very important to continue to uh, have the aspect of father's leaves in this discussion, make more research uh, and also uh, make give more days because I think this one, uh, this aspect is also very important when we talk about mental health with uh, mothers, how, uh, how do equality in the families okay, are. Thank you. Mona. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, it's very beneficial to economically support the preschools. Uh, as Annika said here before, uh, every dime we put into preschool with the small children as soon as they are there uh, is paid back in school when their results are better and their self-esteem is better. They can be educated and uh, get uh, a good job. And uh, if the opposite would be not to support the preschools. Having children in school that are falling behind with bad self-esteem and on the next step, social problems that will bring a lot of problems and costs into the society. So uh, my findings of this are uh, support the preschools. Okay, thank you, Jonas. Last word. I initially wanted to say something about more equal leave taking, but Emilia mentioned that, so I won't say the same thing again. Um, I, I think something that I consider to be very important is to set strict, perhaps stricter um, regulations on the quality of early childcare. In one German state, for example, there's a debate because we're sort of lacking qualified childminders that some of the rules should be loosened a bit so that more children can attend early childcare, for example, that apprentices or people who are not fully qualified yet will also really count as full staff. And also, uh, Annika, you mentioned that differences are quite, or was it you? Anyway, one of you mentioned that differences in the quality are quite stark sort of between neighborhoods as well. I mean, especially in those where it's particularly important where quality is low. So, I, I mean, I think sort of as a conclusion, I would say that Governments, regulators should be very, very strict on quality because it's likely to be a bad deal for children as well when uh, when governments are just expanding parental leave and really cutting down on quality at the same time. I, I mean, I think neither parents nor children would really benefit from such qualities, uh, from such policies. And due to that, patience is also needed when there are too few qualified childminders. It may take a couple of years until we have enough if we can incentivize enough people to study these subjects for example. Thank you. Uh, time is up and I would like to thank uh, the authors, uh, Professor Nabanita Datta Gupta and Jonas Jessen for writing this SNS report and for sharing your knowledge with us. And I would also like to thank the other speakers, Annika Wallenskog, Emilia Bjurgren and Mona Olin. Thank you also to the great audience for taking part in this discussion. And uh, there's also a possibility to continue the discussion outside. There's coffee for everyone. <laughs> and uh, the speakers, some of them at least, will stay around for a while. So thank you so much for coming. <laughs>